welcome to aksharshala today we are going to discuss about commutating capacitor in this session we know that the bistable multivibrator has got two stable states and that it can remain in either of its two stable states for indefinite time suppose if we want to induce any change in its stable state it requires external triggering signal such as pulse or spike from some external source whenever some external triggering signal is applied conduction has to transfer from one device to another one transistor to another suppose on transistor will become off that means conduction is transferred to another transistor so to transfer conduction from one device to another device it will take some time that time is called transition time and it is defined as the interval during which conduction transfers from one transistor to another another so what is the transition time let us see even though input signal from base of the transistor to input signal which is applied at the base of the transistor may be transferred to the output of the transistor and that is tra transferred to the collector of the transistor within zero time the signal at the collector collector of the transistor q1 cannot be transferred to the base of the another transistor instantaneously the signal from base of the on transistor will be transferred to output of the that particular transistor within zero time but again the signal at the collector at the collector of first transistor first transistor cannot be transferred to the base of another transistor instantaneously it will take some time this is because the input capacitance why it is taking time why because this is due to in, input capacitance ci present at the base of the transistor this input capacitance makes the parallel combination of r1 and r2 attenuator act as an uncompensated attenuator so this uncompensated attenuator is reason for transition time so it will have a some finite time so when this uh, resultant capacitance r1 parallel with r2 is given by r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 when it is mixed with uh, input capacitance of transistor q2 then uh, it will have a finite rise time and that rise time is given by r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 into ci so what is the reason for reason for input capacitance ci which is present at the base of the transistor that is one more question here is the input capacitance ci present at the base of the transistor because charge is stored at the base of the transistor due to minority charge carriers minority charge carriers we know that q equivalent to cv no then cv is given by charge by applied voltage which is transferred from capacitor c1 uh, uh, collector of transistor q1 to the, the voltage at the collector collector c1 is transferred to the base of transistor q2 so this voltage when this charge divided with the voltage present at the collector c1 it gives rise to capacitance c so this is the reason for input capacitance present at the base of the transistor this is the attenuator attenuator formed by r2 then this, this will become compensated then transient comes transient time come down then uh, if transient time decreases what happens the signal the signal at the collector of transistor q1 will be transferred to the transferred to the base of the another transistor instantaneously then speed of the operation increases so since these capacitors are introduced since these capacitors are introduced to in, to increase the speed of the operation speed of the device they are called speed up capacitors they are also called transpose capacitors or these are also called as 
commutating capacitor so commutating capacitors are small capacitors connected in parallel with the coupling resistors in order to increase the speed of operation the commutating capacitors so what is the function of commutating capacitors once uh, a small capacitors are connected are introduced in parallel with the coupling resistors then wha wha what they will do let us see commutating capacitors accelerate the removal of charge stored so this is due to input capacitor present at the base of the transistor na so this commutating capacitors starts removing the charge stored at the base of the transistor due to minority carriers if the commutating capacitors if the commutating capacitors are arbitrarily large then r1 r2 network acts as r1 r2 network acts as an overcompensated attenuator and the signal at the collector will be then if it is overcompensated what happens the signal at the collector c1 will be immediately rapidly transferred to the base of the transistor q2 but large values of capacitor have some advantages disadvantages a transistor having been induced to change the state by triggering signal so already i told that uh, by stable multivibrator has got two stable states suppose if you want to induce a change in its state it requires external triggering so now by applying external triggering now its uh, state is changed from one state to another state suppose if you want to bring it back to original state again it requires one more external triggering signal that signal is called succeeding succeeding triggering signal so uh, this is required to induce reverse transition so what is the smallest allowable interval between two triggers is called resolving time of the bistable multivibrator the smallest and there should be a smallest gap between uh, first trigger and second trigger the smallest allowable time gap between two triggers is called resolving time of the flip flop flip flop is another name for bistable multivibrator and its reciprocal of, reciprocal is the maximum frequency at which binary will respond if you take reciprocal of this uh, resolving time that gives the maximum frequency maximum speed of speed speed of the bistable multivibrator at which it will respond the complete transfer of conduction from one device to another device involves two phases two phases the first first of these the transition time during which conduction transfers from one device to another for this transfer of conduction to takes place the voltages across the input and output capacitance of the transistor have to change the voltages across the commutating capacitor c1 and c1 dash did not change during this transfer of conduction after this transfer of conduction the capacitors are allowed to interchange their voltages this additional additional time required for the purpose of completing the recharging of capacitors after the transfer of conduction is called the settling time of course no clear cut distinction can be made between the transition time and the settling time the sum of the transition time and the settling time is called the resolution time resolution time if the com commutating capacitors are too small the transition time is increased but the settling time will be small if the commutating capacitors are too large the transition time is reduced but the settling time will be large so a compromise is called for this equation here frequency depends on r1 r2 r1 r2 and input capacitance if you this input capacitance is undesired capacitance stray capacitance if you decrease this capacitance stray capacitance you can increase speed of operation or if you decrease this r1 r2 values you can increase speed of operation and third one is by not allowing the transistor to go into saturation when the transistor do not saturate the storage time will be reduced resulting in fast change from on to off any queries please contact aksharashala@gmail.com thank you